I'm good at this, I'm getting better at this. I'm gonna have to stand up and walk to it because then it'll feel more natural, man. So I'll pretend I just. Welcome to the top, welcome to the top. Hit him up, baby, time to be the boss. Win the race and I never take a loss. Alright, so you basically take three because um, memory card issues, but we do, we just, we roll with it. Um, so, like I was saying before, in the, in, the, in the bit you've not seen, this is now our extended supplement cupboard um, because we just keep buying so many different flavours of stuff um, that we've actually run out of space for all of our supplements. So that's basically what we, we like, we collect supplements. Um, but I've just put an extra serving of, of Hydromax in here because today's a pull day um, and we have bent over rows on the cards today. So if I don't, I take my morning serving, if I don't take a serving pre-workout, I normally find that my lower back just blows out. So Hydromax is in um, for today. And in today's installment of All In, we are basically gonna be talking about how we have switched up what we do when it comes to our routine, when it comes to training, when it comes to nutrition, to basically maximize the progress and how we've seen the progress that we've seen over the past like nine to 10 weeks. Um, because it, it kind of doesn't feel like it now because I'm just so embedded in this routine, but there's a lot that we've changed. Um, and it's all things that maybe you wouldn't have thought about changing just because it doesn't seem like from a, an individual point of view when you think about like working harder always wanting to do more that kind of thing and the changes that we've made they don't seem like the ones you would go for but they're definitely the reasons why we've been making so much more progress and um, i'm not mentioning them now because we're going to like drip them in throughout the video because it just gives it a bit of a substance then um but yeah, we're, we're going to head to Dust Eating Pre-Workout Meal, we're going to head to Ultraflex Rotherham now and um, literally just get on with the, with the pull session. We'll probably have a bit of a chat before we get there, just go through the session. I may even show you how I set my logbook up just because I have a couple of questions about like, mainly from my clients, just because they want to know how to set their their logbooks up in, like the, in the easiest way because it can be a little bit confusing sometimes. I look at some people's logbooks and I'm like, whoa that's ridiculous i can't even understand that um so i just use like a normal pad hannah's actually got a really good log but we'll show you hannah's as well um it's got like all the boxes with all the sets and weight and stuff i do need to get one because it's so much easier to use um but yeah we'll, we'll go through kind of like how how we set our log books up um and then literally just get into the session welcome to the top welcome to the top, to the top. hit them up baby time to be the boss Win the race and I never okay, take so, a loss. Like I said, we've just got to the gym and I'm just gonna talk you through kind of how I set my logbook up. Because mainly from clients, I just get the question of how I set it up. Normally, I'll try and send them in the way of one like this. Because it's got like the, the weight and the reps that you can write out for in each exercise. It's a hell of a lot easier than the, than the way I've done it, to be honest. But I'm just like stuck in my ways and I I just I like doing it this way so. I with just this one. boxes in mine. I know, yeah. The, the boxes do make it easier. I find that I always end up starting it and then scribbling it out. So I probably should get a box one, but never mind. Um, so with mine, I literally, session, gym, date. If I'm training with anyone or not, I'll make a note of it. How many meals have I had, I'll make a note of that. What time I trained at, and then just give myself like a, how good I'm feeling out of 10. And that's more to just, let myself know like if I had a bad session and some numbers are bad I'll, uh, I'll make sure that I've noted that down and then in terms of how I actually set it up I'll write the exercise the rep range that I'm meant to be working in for that exercise if it's one set just once if it's two set write it twice um, a little line just to break it up and then I'll write like 70 kilos times 12 reps and that's how I'll do that there and then to see what I did last time I'll just like flick back through my logbook there's another scribble page uh, I'll flick back through so it's literally it's easy as that but more than anything with this it's like consistency and you being able to read it like I said I look at some people's love books and I can't even read it I don't even understand what's going on but some people probably think the same about mine so it's kind of just however you want to do it uh, but I'll defo be getting uh, a bit of an easier one to use because it does seem a lot better um, but like I said I was just stuck in my ways a bit welcome to the top welcome to the top 
So one of the one of the first things that we've done over kind of the last nine to ten weeks to essentially make more progress is from a training point of view put a lot more emphasis on training. So we've actually given like more time to training. So we used to come to the gym. We used to be in and out in like an hour, didn't we? Yeah. And we used to listen to the gym, straight to the gym, straight to the first machine, form like almost how quick can you get it done? Just because admittedly life was a bit more hectic then in terms of you were in uni weren't you? Yeah. Um, we didn't live together so it wasn't like as easy to for us to spend a lot of time in the gym. So we've got the luxury of being able to do it now but we, we like we'll come in now, write our log books up, take half an hour, we just like switch off from work, switch off from social media and just start thinking about the session itself. We know what numbers we're going to hit, we know what we're going in there for and even just having that mindset when you're going into the gym, it then allows you to get a lot more out of the session. So we can therefore now train a lot more intense and because we actually understand intensity now and, and actually working harder, that obviously gives us the ability to like eat more, uh, then the ability to eat more, the ability to train harder and it's just like an upward spiral from there. Um, but yeah, what, one of the one of the main things that we've done is definitely give ourselves more time to train because I think a lot of people do rush their sessions. Yeah. They don't take enough time to rest. I probably rest for like five minutes in between my sets now. Literally. Or maybe longer. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah said to me, I did a set of RDLs the other day, didn't I? And I must have been resting for about 15 minutes after the one set, simply because I needed it. And I, I never used to have that much time, but I was able to do that, get my breath back, recover and carry on with my session and keep progressing my session so even just like obviously we all we all understand that you need to rest in between your sets until you're ready to go again to be able to progress them but it's the allocating the time to be able to do that, that that's necessary so if you don't already obviously only if you can allocating more time to your session giving yourself more time to think about your session rest and recover for your sets um, do your warm-up sets things like that that's gonna it's gonna play a massive part in the progress you make. If you're in off season, like, I don't have any cardio in at the minute, so I do take a lot longer to recover than when I would have if I did have cardio in my um, training. So you probably will need a little bit longer if you're eating a lot of food, um, and your heart rate obviously takes a lot longer to come back down. So just take your time. Yeah, definitely. If you think about you're eating more food so you can progress your lift better you've got less cardio in so you see the health maybe not as good as it was before those two coupled together they equal needing more rest um, so yeah it's just a little thing to think about like that and like we said this is it almost feels like you're doing less doesn't it taking loads of time between sets feels like you're doing less but it's beneficial you know, just because you're not feeling absolutely smashed for every minute of the session it's a good thing because you can then go into the session give 100 percent intensity welcome to the top welcome to the top, to the top. So, like I was just saying then about recovery and taking time between sets, it's not only there that we've focused a lot more on recovery. We now train probably like the least we ever have in terms of training frequency. So, training split is push pull off, legs off. So, we, we rest either side of legs. Um, I've always pretty much ran three on one off and even up to four on one off before when like an arm day has been implemented but right now it's a two on one off one on one off split the least i've trained the least amount of volume per session that i've actually done as well and since starting with cuba nine weeks ago my volume has actually come down in the session so i'm actually doing less sets per session simply because i've gotten stronger and then the, those additional sets they, they were detrimental because i was too smashed to do the set and me trying to do them meant that my recovery was taking a hit as well. So it's the least volume and the least frequency I've ever trained. And because of this, and now my ability to recover, has meant that my sessions are so much better in terms of the progression and the actual weight that I'm moving, um, which is obviously still creating more than enough of a stimulus. And when progressive overload is implemented to, to your training and you're just consistently progressively overloading them, that's where you're going to see the progress. So. If you're training that often that you can't progress your lifts anymore, it's not, it may not be a case of, you know, oh, just switching them up but keeping the volume the same, keeping the frequency the same. Maybe you're just doing a little bit too much. And me and Hannah definitely were doing that. Um, and now training this much less, we're progressing so much more. So it's recovery inside the gym, 
and outside that we've been looking at and then again on top of this obviously this is only if you can and if you, you find like financially can regular massage work regular regular chiro work we both get this done now something that we've never again never done before um, and it just it just helps like i'm not saying you come out of one massage and oh my god i feel amazing but just having that regular work in and ticking over with that regular work you just feel better overall like today no aches no pains no niggles and if that is, is helping towards me feeling like this then i'm going to keep it in I know I was touching it before, but another thing that we've done to kind of step up the progress that we're making is understand training intensity, real training intensity, and actually taking sets of failure. I don't think until you've like done it, trained with people that do it, you, you actually know what it is. And uh, since training out of this gym, tra me training with different people, kind of training with different people, people who are above us, levels above us, that's caused us to level up our training. Not everyone's gonna be able to train with people like that, but watch them, take something from them in terms of the intensity, because now we've upped our training intensity, we can both get a lot more out of sets, which has meant we can lower our volume when we train. It's also meant that food can get a lot higher without, without much detriment to body composition. So we can push food a lot more, which in turn gives us more energy to go again in the gym, lifting heavier weight with that higher intensity. So it all spirals upwards, but learning intensity, how to be intense, actually taking a set to failure, not kind of like kidding yourself into it. That is probably one of the biggest things I've learned to do over the past nine, 10 weeks. And it's just leveled my training up completely. So another thing that we have done massively is learn how to move in the correct way. So before you start pushing numbers up, progressing your lift, progressive overload, that kind of thing, you need to make sure you're doing the movement right, contracting the right muscles. So for example, in this, you see loads of people chucking about 100 kilo dumbbells, a single arm dumbbell rep, but the actual stimulus they're getting in the back is minimal. So, this is a great example because I used to do this so wrong. Whereas now, as you see, I put all my weight through this side of my body. So I can't create any counter force when I'm rowing. It's simply just my lat and this side that's working. And then on top of that, I don't put this foot back. I have it here. I don't step back with this one. I just stay stable here. And the reason for that is, if my hip is further this way forward, I can, shorten my lat easier the shorter i get my lat in this movement the better the more stimulus the more contraction i'm going to get through my lat so i'm doing everything in this movement to try and make it harder and make sure i can track the right muscle you should have to do that on every single exercise if you're doing exercise and you can't feel them there's a good chance you're not using the right muscle so that's one thing me and hannah have done stripped it right back when it comes to the movements now we're using the right muscle contracting it as we progress the lifts shock we're, impre we're improving we're progressing and that's what you need to do you need to make sure that before you start hammering weight on anything you're actually moving right
pull done again uh, another productive one and like we've kind of been mentioning throughout the whole video hopefully you've uh, you've taken some bits on how you can like kind of level your progress up a little bit um exactly like we have um but yeah all we're gonna do now is just head home get post-workout meal in and, and that kind of takes you on to the last thing and that's with food what we've changed massively is actually placing food kind of like where it needs to be placed first and foremost so the initial increases in our calories have been predominantly training days and predominantly around the training window and if you think about it logically that's exactly where you need the calories that's exactly where you need the food um, easy digestible food post workouts just really high carb um, easy to digest carb minimal fat to make sure digestion is, is, is relatively good um, and, and we can kind of get the, the food digested as quick as possible um, but yeah that's kind of the last tip that I could give you and the last thing that we have that I can think of anyway that, that we have done to uh, to maximize the progress that we've made over the last nine weeks since we started with Cuba and um, that's kind of as you as you might have seen the, the transformation on the, the thumbnail or some Carl will put it somewhere um, but that's kind of how uh, that's gone about over the last nine weeks and how you know I, I, I'm 12 kilos up uh, in this time frame and you know condition is it's not as good obviously but it's not you know to gain 12 kilos I would have expected it to be a lot worse um, and it's just down to the boxes that we've ticked, things that have changed um, to basically maximise that progress but thank you for, for tuning in for this episode of All In um, again just please like, share, comment subscribe, that kind of stuff, it means a lot um, I, you know I always make sure that I try and get back to all the comments, that kind of thing um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next one Welcome to the top, welcome to the top Hit them up baby, time to beat the boss Win the race and I never take a loss